slowly figured out how Dove had learned so many things. And the first question, one of the first questions I ever asked him was, what have you been doing all these years? And he typed out listening, which I thought was a good answer. And he'd been understanding everything. And I'm so grateful that we um, have had this breakthrough and have gotten to know Dove and realize all that he knows and how smart he is. It seems like such a simple thing to just point at an alphabet board. And why would it be that, for example, someone like um, Dove wouldn't be able to do that all the way up until nine years old and then all of a sudden so quickly he could learn it? Well, if you think about it, what is one of the most important kind of signs of autism is that a child, an infant, is not pointing. <coughs> this is the most basic form of, of indicating intention for a person. First of all, their own intention, and then shortly afterward, joint attention between another, maybe mom or whoever. And so this is what does not come on board. And if you think about it, infants develop this before one year old. Nobody teaches them. It just happens. Soma had the genius to realize when Tito was a toddler that, that he didn't know how to point, and she literally took his hand and showed him with her hand and taught him that simple act of pointing. And, one, and he was obsessed with the calendar when he was a toddler. And most people would have said, been terrified and thought, oh, that's so abnormal, stop doing that. But instead, she saw that that was the object of his desire, what he was so interested in. And she used it, and she taught him to point, use his index finger, got him to point at numbers when she asked him to. And, and then the next step was, you know, what comes between one and three? Could he do that? He could do that. She went on to letters, connected the sounds with the letters, phonics, and went into teaching him language. So it was using a kind of higher level formal system to get at those earlier things that never developed. The secret's not in the board, I will say. <laughs> it's, and it doesn't matter if it's QWERTY or ABC, and so I think people should just use QWERTY. We just happen to have this ABC, but because it does match with the computer, you might as well. There's actually, I was shocked when I realized that there's actually no reason to learn the alphabet in the order it's in, <coughs> except for that one song. <laughs> um, this is, to me, really about joint attention. Like I was saying, this lack of synchronicity from early on. Um, being able to connect in time and in space on one thing and know that the other person and you both are having a similar experience. And that's what I think this communication method is really about. And the school is really about how to get that joint attention I'm talking about between a few children and a teacher. It's very challenging, but it can be done. So it's really a change of culture and mindset. I mean, it's getting rid of the old model that behavior equals intention. Because these people and children have a hard time having intentional voluntary behavior. So you know, just because a kid doesn't uh, look in your eyes doesn't mean that they're not listening or that they aren't interested. And you know, the whole model of, of autism is someone doesn't look at you, they don't care about people, they don't care about emotion, they don't want to be social. But actually, um, Tito told us that when he was asked to look in a person's eyes, he could no longer understand what they were saying because the senses were kind of split off. And those are some of the things we learned by going to neuroscientists and testing Tito. And that's the direction we have to go in, is, is, is to stop equating behavior with the most obvious cultural equivalent of, of meaning, because that's simply not true in a developmental disorder like this. Okay. All right. Thank you all for being here. It's wonderful.